creativity, daring, and passion reign in the School of Fine Arts. Walking around the hallways, one cannot go through without stopping and observing each piece from a close distance. This kind of space might be a little challenging for certain types of people, though. Till now, Maria has been taking care of an old woman for a living. In the opening scene, however, the latter passes away. Maria had no emotional connection with this lady, and frankly neither did her daughter, who originally hired Maria, but this occasion is still quite gloomy for her. Now she will have to enter the job market once more and try to find something to do. She already has one interview in line, and she's particularly looking forward to attending it. That night, while preparing to go to bed, Maria's husband hears as she goes over her points for the interview. Her motto seems to be, do it twice. She's clearly aiming to get a cleaning job. The next morning, she arrives at the School of Fine Arts, and finds that life flows so quickly in this place that the lady who called her has no time to conduct an interview. She just goes over Maria's resume very briefly and determines right away that, thanks to her cleaning experience, she's the right fit for the job. She's rushing along a labyrinth of corridors as she speaks to her, and Maria struggles to even catch up to her. While going through a variety of pieces, she mentions that there are 450,000 works of art preserved in this space. To begin her work, Maria has to contact someone by the name of Hubert, the caretaker here. He seems to know this building more than anyone else, since he's been practically living here since he was 20 years old. Students call him a mammoth. To get Maria's starter kit, they have to go over to his room, but the door seems to be locked. Maria will have to come back here after a while and fetch it in order to begin her work. It is a lot to take in for Maria. When the woman leaves her in the locker room, she wanders through the corridors in search of Hubert's room. After finding it, she reaches for a knock, but soon realizes that the door is already open. Through a narrow opening, she sees the man for the first time, dancing by himself. Clearly he isn't particularly talented in swing, but he seems to be having a hell of a time. Maria turns around towards the corridor after a few seconds and suddenly hears the door opening behind her. Hubert is standing upright, gazing at her with scolding eyes. He thinks that Maria was peeking at him, and to be frank, she sort of was, but she manages to assure him otherwise. Hubert is a whimsical, fancy-looking man. After Maria lets him know about the purpose of her visit, he politely invites her inside and hands her the starter kit. Just before her first day ends, she sees butter on an exhibition box and cleans it thoroughly. A few minutes later, a student girl named Naomi knocks on the locker room and asks for a bucket for her installation. There seems to be a big gap between the students and the cleaning ladies. The latter doesn't seem to be fond of the new generation. The next morning, her boss is in a rage. Someone stole the autograph of a very famous guest artist. She is infuriated with the staff, and unfortunately for Maria, she was the last one to leave the exhibition hall. Naturally they accuse her, and confused, she tries to deny it politely. The boss mentions what the installation was, and Maria's face fills with joy. It seems to have been melting butter. Maria realizes she is in big trouble, but suddenly Hubert hops into the room, holding a piece of butter in one hand and saying that he found it. Clearly, however, it isn't the same butter. Hubert must be trying to save Maria from losing her job. Later that day, she decides to pay him a visit. She doesn't know how to pay him back, so at first she reaches for her wallet, but Hubert says he prefers a cake called Paris Breast. Maria is a bit confused. People here seem to think about and perceive the world in a completely different manner. Before today, she would have never thought of melting butter as a piece of art. But slowly, she begins to appreciate the unconventionality of the entire exhibition. Her husband, Horatio, however, doesn't share this attitude at all. When she shares her experiences that night, Horatio doesn't take the art she describes seriously. The contrast between the couple becomes even more obvious the next day, when Maria becomes particularly drawn by the pieces exhibited in the school. She overhears a conversation between Naomi and Hubert in the next scene. The student seems to be behind on her schedule. Desperate not to lose her scholarship, she's anxious that she won't be able to finish her project on time. Hubert and Maria both decide to stay late at work and give her a hand. And so, that evening, Naomi shares with them the concept of her project. The middle-aged Maria and Hubert seem to struggle to understand the meaning of it all. So after a while, Naomi turns to simple directive terms and gives them a task to unravel a thread of red wool. After night falls and the task is successfully carried out, Naomi hands Maria a piece of ceramic vulva and asks her to hang it on every three to ten threads. Maria listens to her speaking about the meaning behind the installation again. This seems to be the first time that Maria is engaged in this kind of conversation, and she tries her best to remain cool and look competent. Hubert approaches them, and as Naomi leaves to do something else, she leaves it to Maria to explain everything to him. The latter doesn't need much explaining, however. Hubert sees seashells in vulvas, and this is as far as the discussion goes. Hours pass then, and Hubert finds himself looking at her. While working on this unusual piece, a bond is created between them. When the morning comes and the building starts overflowing with students again, the sleepless Maria and Hubert struggle to keep themselves awake. Just before the exhibition starts, Maria learns, to her horror, that her broom is stuck on a red paint surface on the floor. 
She must have left it in a bad place yesterday, and now it's ruining Naomi's installation. Mr. Kaufman, the professor, flies inside the exhibition hall and asks Maria to move away. Hubert tries to buy her some time later. He walks up to Kaufman and starts talking to him about an imaginary problem, but the broom remains stuck on the paint. The professor finally frees himself from Hubert, and it seems inevitable that in a very short time, Maria will lose her job. Quickly and creatively, however, Naomi begins presenting her work and says that Maria with her broom is part of the installation. To Maria's surprise, it all plays out well. And so, this is how Maria is slowly gravitating towards the creative world without any deliberate conscious efforts. She seems to have a knack for it. In the next scene, Hubert and Maria are trying out a technology that has just been installed in one of the halls. It is a fantastic piece of visual and sound equipment. Taking Maria's image, she imitates her movements, but filling it with color makes it that much more magnificent. Maria seems to have noticed something symbolic that day. Thanks to the art school, she's starting to see the colors in herself she never saw before. She begins to see some change. She doesn't know this yet, but once this process of self-transformation begins, there is no way back. As time goes on, she finds it tougher to talk to Horatio. Once, she urges him to call their daughter, but the man explodes in anger after this is suggested to him. It seems that their daughter, Charlotte, once ran away with her father's best friend Paul, and since then, the conflict between her and Horatio hasn't been resolved. Maria, however, is eager to sacrifice everything to get that relationship back. That night, Maria goes to Charlotte in secret. But upon arriving, she realizes that there is a huge party inside, so she leaves. The next day, Maria needs to go down to the basement of the school, and since she seems a little clumsy at times, Hubert decides to follow her down and help her out. They seem to be on a path of drawing closer and closer to one another. Conversing about seemingly ordinary things, the two begin to like each other. The first evidence of a great change in Maria is shown soon after, as she notices a box full of sponges and gets excited for how beautiful they look. It reminds her of the quiet importance of her profession. A cleaning lady is invisible, but she is the one ensuring the comfort of everyone around her. Hubert seems to appreciate this perspective of hers. He's clearly intrigued by Maria's secret colorful side. When the two take the boxes they went down to fetch, Maria gets loads of artificial snow in her hair. She tries to get rid of it at once, but since she's unable to do so, Hubert decides to help. This is the first moment of intimacy between them, and Maria seems to feel an unusual gravity towards this man. This is why she quickly gets her senses back and pulls his hands away warmly. She can't seem to put this moment out of her mind throughout the rest of the day. Her and Horatio are preparing to go out with their friends when she runs upstairs to get a scarf. When touching her hair, she feels that a sprinkle of artificial snow is still in her hair. She would have never done such a thing before, but now she takes it out and stores it safely. The memory that it is connected to seems to hold a great meaning to her. The next day, while she models for Naomi, Hubert works on his own piece. And as Maria learns about the intricacies of the students' sexual lives, Hubert finishes his work. After going through quite an unusual experience, Maria goes back to her locker and finds a piece made with sponges. Looking like a snowy mountain, the object looks fantastic. Naturally, Maria understands who it's from immediately. That night, when getting in bed with Horatio, she tries to get intimate with him. Her eyes are closed, however, as she is thinking about someone else. Her husband seems to feel no passion whatsoever. It is clear that their relationship is completely drained of sexuality. Maria's view of her husband seems to be changing quickly. To add to this, the next morning, Horatio uses the sponge Hubert made for some ordinary cleaning purposes. Reactively, Maria takes it out of his hands and protects her gift. That day, she brings the promise cake to Hubert. They eat it together in a room that was once used as a painting studio. After they both have a taste, Hubert decides that the cream is better used for painting than for eating. They start putting it on one of the canvases, and while engaged in the process, suddenly pause to look at each other. Something clicks in their minds, and it seems as if they are about to lean closer to each other. But before anything can happen, somebody rushes into the room, and they quickly drop their occupation to hide behind sculptures. The couple that rushes in remains ignorant of their presence, so, clueless that somebody else is watching, they begin having sex. Over the sounds of moaning, Hubert starts talking about the sponge piece he made, and it is in this conversation that Maria first mentions her 22-year-old husband. Hubert didn't know that she was married. Hiding a sudden wave of sadness coming from his heart, he tries to smile, but as he thinks that it is all over, sadness finds its way through his eyes. In the next scene, as Maria overthinks about what happened, we see that Hubert also has a sprinkle of the artificial snow with him. After work, Maria goes to the pharmacy where Charlotte works. Since the latter never answers her phone, this is the only way she can talk to her. Maria's daughter seems to despise her family. After a fight that broke out between them, she has no intention to rebuild the relationships with her mother and father. Maria tries her best to invite Charlotte back into her life, but this attempt to rebuild their relationship turns out unsuccessful, as well. Stirred up and irritated, Maria, who comes back home in the next scene, 
breaks a stereo. She tries to hide the reason for her mood from Horatio at first, but then decides to be open with him. She wants her daughter back. What Horatio told her during the fight was mean, and she feels guilty for not taking her side. She wants to rebuild their relationship, and she wants Horatio to help her too. She allows herself to be vulnerable here, but her husband seems to be unable to empathize with her. He's blinded by his own views and anger. Despite all this, Maria tries to catch a glimpse of beauty in herself that night. And the next morning, she heads out to the school with the intention of being a model for students. Appearing on the stage of an auditorium in the next scene, she feels tense and anxious, but covering her intimate parts, the tension soon leaves her. Suddenly Maria feels liberated. After the drawing class, Naomi invites her to her second presentation tomorrow. She says that Hubert is also going to be there. This information makes Maria frown after she accepts the invitation. There has been a weird silence between her and Hubert lately. The next morning, the two are watching Naomi's presentation from a window. Standing on a long chair, they watch as Naomi's even more unusual installation is being critiqued by the professor. He asks her to describe her own work in her own words, and stops her immediately after she begins giving an intellectual answer. He doesn't want her to think deeply and come up with clever answers. That is the job of a critic, but not of an artist. The artist should listen to their guts and convey what's boiling inside their hearts. Now the professor wants to feel Naomi's work, but since the latter has created it with only intellectual reasons in mind, he fails to do so. This critique also fits Maria's life decisions in some way. Maria's heart and brain are clearly speaking in different languages, and her decisions seem to have always been derived from her mind rather than from her heart. Suddenly Hubert comes down from the chair, and it causes Maria to trip over and hurt her wrist. They go inside his room then, and since Maria's wrist seems to be fine, Hubert shows her his collection of drawings. Since he was 20 years old, he's been helping students in various ways, and they've been paying him back with drawings. His collection is enormous. As an apology, he gives her one of the small-sized drawings, and as Maria saves it inside her booklet, Hubert notices it and asks her what's inside. He is extremely surprised when he finds out that Maria writes good poetry. He praises her way with words, but suddenly Maria realizes that she's late for the drawing class, and their conversation is cut short. When the class is dismissed for a 10-minute smoking break, she ends up being alone in the auditorium. She makes a narrow opening in the curtains, and when Hubert walks by the windows, he suddenly sees her posing in front of an empty lecture hall. A mirror is placed in front of her, and through that mirror, their eyes meet. If there were any walls between them beforehand, in this moment of warm intimacy, they are all shattered. After class, Maria sees a sticky note on Hubert's door and goes down in one of the halls, where he's engaged in a dancing lesson with cleaning staff. His hip swing is still a little off, but some progress is still showing. When the cleaning staff leaves, the light is turned off, and the screen that imitates their movements depicts the two of them kissing for the first time. Two silhouettes of colorful dust that resemble Maria and Hubert have intertwined with each other for a long time. And when Hubert watches Maria leaving the campus that night, he sees her stopping for a few seconds for a dance. Life is exploding from her entire being. The next morning, Horatio prepares a surprise breakfast for her, and compliments her appearance with a bright face. And as surprising as it is for Maria, Horatio also tells her that he is ready to think about apologizing to Charlotte. Suddenly she feels a wave of guilt hitting her forcefully. This is why, after work that day, she says sorry to Hubert and ends her relationship with him. She wants this to be the last time they ever talk to each other. Hubert seems hurt. He thought Maria was different and more daring, but as it turns out, he was wrong. These words of his are quickly followed by a discussion that puts him in a mildly uncomfortable state, so he zips his mouth and begins carrying out Maria's request not to speak with each other anymore. Coming back home that night, Maria is happy with her decision. Hubert's repetitive life, however, carries a much more depressing tone after the breakup. His existence is going nowhere, and just like his vintage car that is parked somewhere in Paris, he rusts away without exploring the endless possibilities of life. To put it briefly, he's simply waiting around to be buried in the school's backyard and the memory of their kiss keeps haunting his mind. One time, while cleaning the library, Maria flicks through a journal and finds a sculpture of a pigeon. The journal says that the collar part of this pigeon, with the number one on it, is estimated at a mind-blowing price. She has a sculpture just like this one, so her astonishment is understandable. Later that night, she checks it out and finds that there is a number one on the sculpture that she owns. She can buy a house with this little sculpture. The next day, while cleaning a painting studio, she accidentally makes a mess and goes to Hubert's room, only to find out that he is gone. The room is completely empty. He seems to have left without any notice in one nebulous poof. He didn't even ask for a farewell party, but the school planned it without him. In the next scene, during the party, she struggles to walk up to him. Finally she gathers all her courage to follow him when he gets into his room, but upon approaching the door, Maria pauses for a while. This is when she suddenly hears footsteps coming from behind. And in panic, she hides herself in a locker. When Hubert is left alone again and he passes Maria by, 
he sees a piece of her dress sticking out from the gap between the two lockers. Slowly he walks up to it, and chuckles quietly after realizing that it's Maria inside. Then he lets her know about his news. Throughout all these years, he had a poster of a house in his office, and he never got interested in where it was. Now, however, he knows that it is in France, and what is even more exciting is that everybody can rent it. He's driving there tomorrow at 1 p.m. with his car, and he wants Maria to know that there is one vacant place inside his vintage vehicle. Maria is facing a dilemma. Thoughts of Hubert will surely be in her mind throughout the rest of this day. The next day, while cleaning the exhibition hall, Naomi breaks it to her that she's planning to miss her exam today. Nobody can force her to do it. After the failure that her previous piece turned out to be, she might be avoiding taking a leap of faith, but Maria suddenly explodes in her face, urging her harshly to do it, no matter what it takes. She goes on and on about the reasons why she should do the exam, and in the end, she finds herself unsure as to whom she's speaking with. This speech of hers might just as successfully be directed at her inner self, and inspired by this realization, she reactively grabs one of the installations, a colorful bike made from mannequins, and rides outside the campus. Professors now see her as a performance artist. As Hubert enters his garage, she rides to Charlotte's pharmacy, and tells her what she learned while working in the School of Fine Arts, when you fall in love, you can't help it at all. Maria rushes down the subway afterwards to get to Hubert as quickly as possible. Tension rises as the latter starts his car and looks around in search of his love. Unfortunately, the garage is closed when she arrives there. Running aimlessly around, she begins looking for a vintage car. Suddenly, exactly in the moment when all hopes begin to fade, she hears the sound of a swing coming from behind, and realizes without looking back that it's Hubert. The latter seems to have acted according to Maria's motto. He came back to check twice, and thanks to this wise action, Maria can now run to him and embrace him firmly. After their passions begin to settle down, she asks to be the one behind the wheel. Maria is ready to determine where her life goes next. Meanwhile, Horatio is discussing the meaning behind the pigeon sculpture with his friends. He's saying that Maria left him a very unusual farewell message, claiming that the sculpture is a house in Portugal. Horatio is extremely confused, all he can see is a simple bird. 